Boy, this has just been a couple of weeks from hell, hasn't it? But you know what? Let's do something fun. Today, we are going to rank all of the Beatles albums. Because, you know, I don't talk about the Beatles all that often on this channel. So, as you can see, I got out my Beatles box set, which includes all of the UK releases, along with uh, the US release of Magical Mystery Tour. I was going to do this a week ago, but for obvious reasons, I had to postpone it. Thank you very much. Also, I wanted to use this uh, chance to test out my new camera that I got just recently. So let's get right into it. Um, you know, ranking the Beatles albums is no tall order. I even made a post asking everybody what their personal ranking would be, and it could change at any minute. Uh, if you've been watching my channel, you probably know what my favorite Beatles album is, but even trying to put my ranking together, I was really going back and forth. It's not easy, and ultimately it doesn't matter, but hey, where you want to see me rank the Beatles albums, let's go ahead and do that right now. I do recognize that for a lot of people, my parents included, uh, they grew up with the US releases. Um, I certainly grew up with a couple of those as well, Meet the Beatles rather than With the Beatles. But because this is the box set that I have, I'm going with their UK releases. This is what the Beatles actually arrange themselves. So that's the way it's gonna go. And I can tell you right away, I already know what my bottom pick is going to be, which seems to be a lot of people's bottom pick. It's Yellow Submarine. And hey, I love the film Yellow Submarine. It was really my introduction to the Beatles in many ways. But when you really look at the album, first of all, uh, the entire B-side is just George Martin's orchestrations for the film. And the, the A-side is only six songs, uh, two of which were appeared in one form or another on other albums or singles. And even the new songs that are on here, like All Together Now, Only a Northern Song, they're not like top tier Beatles songs. Uh, the only real reason to get this is for Hey Bulldog. Hey Bulldog is absolutely the essential track to Yellow Submarine. And I also think It's All Too Much is great as well. But this is definitely the bottom of my list, but I do have to say it is still an enjoyable listen. Um, I do really like George Martin's orchestrations. It really shows the genius of his musicality. So, um, you know, hey, if this is the worst uh, Beatles album, that's not bad. Instead of me just giving my rankings, um, I'll do that at the end, but um, I'm just gonna go through all of these in chronological order and I'll let you know my general thoughts. I'll give some essential tracks. Please please me. Um, obviously, this came out in 1963, and um, as far as debut albums go, it, it's pretty good. I mean, this was not a time when albums were a big thing in pop music. They were a big thing in jazz, but it was really just a collection of singles and B-sides that they and covers that they filled out to make a full-length LP. Um, and that's basically what Please Please Me is. You've got um, the first two singles. You've got Love Me Do and the B-side was P.S. I Love You. You've got Please Please Me, which for me is the essential track off of this album. It's such a progressive song for its time, especially Ringo's drum fills. The harmonies are really unique. I love that Paul just holds that E while John does the descending melody. Harmonies are great on it. When they did the rest of the album, they said, well, just go through your live set, and that's pretty much what they did. It's basically, this is what they would have done at the Cavern Club. Although, I'm inclined to believe that because doo-wop was really big at the time, the doo-wop craze, um, it's why they did Baby It's You and Anna Go To Him, uh, rather than like the classic Chuck Berry and Little Richard covers that they would do later. It's a little bit dated. I mean, it's obviously, you're not gonna get that full album experience that you get later on. But in terms of a debut album and considering it was really done for the most part in a day, I think it's pretty good. You've got I Saw Her Standing There. Of course, you've got the first single they ever made with Love Me Do. And of course, the classic Twist and Shout. So yeah, please, please me. It's not gonna be very high on my list, but you know what? Solid effort, guys. I mean, for a first album, considering this is where it all started, it's pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and put that right there on top of Yellow Submarine, and we're going to now talk about With The Beatles. And again, this is the UK release. In the US, uh, we got Meet The Beatles. And I really have to say, I know that this isn't what The Beatles wanted to release, 
I just think it's a much, much better album. I mean, take a look at this A side. I want to hold your hand. I saw her standing there. This boy. It won't be long. All I've got to do and all my lovin'. That's a pretty incredible A side when you get right down to it. But because they didn't want to release their singles on their albums, we don't have I Want to Hold Your Hand and This Boy on here. You know, we've still got All My Lovin', and that's going to be the essential track for me. I also love It Won't Be Lawn. I actually really like George's first song, Don't Bother Me, and also his spirited cover of Chuck Berry's Roll Over Beethoven. But then there's other covers I really never cared for, like I don't like their version of Smokey Robinson's You Really Got a Hold on Me. And actually, uh, the song Not a Second Time was the only early Beatles original to appear on my worst Beatles tracks, and I'm still not a big fan of that. I'm also not a huge fan of Little Child. Some of, some of the songs on here are kind of trite. Um, I think there still is some progression happening, um, but in terms of an album, I think it falls a tiny bit short when compared to Please Please Me. I'm going to go ahead and put with the Beatles um, under Please Please Me. So I, I think Please Please Me is the better album than with the Beatles. Um, and again, if we were talking about Meet the Beatles, that would be much higher on my list. Um, however, Hard Day's Night, I can say, is a huge, huge leap forward. Of course, we all love the film. The film is a rock and roll masterpiece, one of the best rock films ever made, and all the songs that were in the film that are included here are all classics. Hard Day's Night, Should Have Known Better, If I Fell, Happy Just to Dance With You, And I Love Her, Tell Me Why, Can't Buy Me Love. They're all fantastic. And there's more great songs in here. On the B-side, you got Any Time At All, very underrated track. You Can't Do That, that's one of my favorites. You know, you gotta love that cowbell. I gotta have more cowbell. And there's other interesting stuff here. I'll Cry Instead has a little bit of that skiffle feel. Um, things We Said Today is a little bit more melancholic. Um, when I Get Home is probably the weakest link on this album, but I don't think it's really all that bad. I think one of my favorite things about A Hard Day's Night is this the first time it's all original tunes. It's all John Lennon and Paul McCartney songs. A Hard Day's Night was on my playlist, and it's got to be my essential track. But I also think If I Fell is equally essential. Can't Buy Me Love, You Can't Do That are such bangers. It's a really, really solid album, and I love listening to it. I'll put it on in the car anytime, anytime at all. <laughs> it's, it's not funny. This is definitely going to be high on the list, so for now, we're going to put that on top here. And unfortunately, we're going to go right back down because now we've got Beatles for sale. And, um, you know, this I, I believe this was meant to be just a, a quick holiday release so that they could get it out for the holiday market. And there is some good music on here. Uh, no Reply, that's a much more melancholic tune from John. Really brilliant track. I like I'm a Loser and Babies in Black. Eight Days a Week is a classic. But there's too many covers on this after we just had an album that was all originals. And some of them are bad. Like, this is one of the reasons why on my top 10 worst Beatles songs list, I had to make a rule, no cover songs, because... Yeah, Mr. Moonlight would definitely be pretty high. I forgot to also mention A Taste of Honey. Um, I don't particularly care for Words of Love, their Buddy Holly cover. Um, and even some other originals here, like Every Little Thing or I Don't Want to Spy All the Party. I don't really care about those either. It's funny that now in the Get Back documentary, George says, oh, we should do Every Little Thing. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, listening to Beatles for Sale, it was very underwhelming coming off of A Hard Day's Night. And I just think it's a lackluster album. I am actually going to put it very low, um, above Yellow Submarine, but below everything else. But we go back up with help. The film, obviously, it came from not quite as good as A Hard Day's Night, but it's fun. It's silly. It's, uh, it's like a James Bond film with the Beatles. John's cry for help was real. I, you know, the pressures of being a Beatle, among many other things. Uh, Ticket to Ride, that might be my essential track from this album. John's got some great songs on here. You've got to hide your love away. You're going to lose that girl. I think that's a very underrated track. And not to take away from Paul, you got The Night Before. And even George 
Uh, he has a great moment that was in the film called I Need You. Ringo gets a chance to shine with Act Naturally. You have a little bit of a lull with You Like Me Too Much. Uh, that was actually one of my worst of tracks. I'm not a huge fan of It's Only Love, but it's not too bad. But then you get a couple of uh, songs that really were big, like uh, I've Just Seen a Face and Yesterday. Yesterday being the first solo number that Paul did himself with George Martin's orchestration. So there's definitely there's definitely some progression happening. Um, I think uh, Help, I think it's a solid album. Um, not quite as good as Hard Day's Night, so I'm going to put it under Hard Day's Night, but above Please Please Me. And man, you want to talk about progression, we are about to talk about Rubber Soul. And you know, Rubber Soul's an album, I feel I never give it enough credit. I, I think maybe it's because it's got a couple of, uh, like, slow acoustic songs that don't really do it for me. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Girl. Even Michelle, although I think it's a beautiful song, it doesn't really do it for me. But God, some of these songs, I mean, Nowhere Man, that's gotta be one of my all-time favorite Beatles songs. George's If I Needed Someone. To me, that's a point where George really shows that he's really blossoming into a great songwriter. Drive My Car, that's a banger to open up. Norwegian Wood, The Word, that's a very underrated tune. And what's great about this album is that the flow is fantastic. Um, you know, you get a banger and then you get kind of a contemplative tune. And you can tell they're, they're doing new things. They're very influenced by Bob Dylan. I'm looking through you. you. You don't look different, but you have changed. A lot of great ideas here in my life. I mean, Jesus. I'm just, I mean, you're going to see a lot of me gushing about these albums. My only gripe about Rubber Soul is that I'm not a fan of the last track, <laughs> um, Run For Your Life, which was on my uh, worst of Beatles list. And a lot of people have told me, hey, come on, lay off of that song. And again, it's not a, not a bad song, but it just kind of leaves the album on a bit of a downer. And I've just never really liked it for that reason. But you know, when I was listening to it again, I really was reminded that Rubber Soul is a great, great record with great flow. And, you know, it's uh, it's definitely got to be high on my list. When I was trying to figure out an order for this, I wasn't sure if I would put it above A Hard Day's Night or put A Hard Day's Night above Rubber Soul. And I'm going to get to that in a second. I'm going to put um, these albums right over here for now. Uh, let's carry on and we'll come back to talking about this. And now we are about to get into the heavy hitters. And oh my God, Revolver. I love this album. I love it so much. Just from the one, two, three, four, from Taxman, this album just rocks so hard. I love that George's song is the kickoff track to Revolver. You know, it's it's such a great political tune, but there's still so much good humor in it. That's Paul playing the guitar solo. I know it was George's song, but Paul played the guitar solo. And speaking of Paul, Paul has so many good tunes on Eleanor Rigby. Oh my God, if that isn't the most perfect, perfect follow-up to The Rock and Tax Man. George Martin's orchestration, that's like Mozart-level orchestration. And... Paul's lyrics just carry so much emotion to go from having written P.S. I Love You to the song about the human condition, wearing a face that she keeps in a jar by the door. It's, and then John's I'm Only Sleeping follows that. That's such an emotional tune. And it's just one great song after another for no one. That's a song nobody talks about, but it's such a great tune. Got to get you into my life. That's a rocker. And then for this album to end with Tomorrow Never Knows, such a quintessential psychedelic track of the time and one that really pioneered a lot of recording techniques. You know, there's times when I'll spin Revolver and I'll just be listening to it going, how can this not be the best Beatles album? You know, there's still so many other to choose from, but this is a really, really solid candidate for the best Beatles album. It's hard for me to pick an essential track, but I'd probably have to go with Eleanor Rigby, but equally essential is Tax Man, Got to Get You Into My Life and Tomorrow Never Knows. It's a perfect album, what can I say? It's 
going to be very, very, very high on this list. If not, maybe number one, we'll find out. <laughs> Again, I, I think you all know it's going to be number one. But And we've got the big one now, Sgt. Pepper, one of the most iconic album covers ever made and one of the most iconic albums, frequently topping greatest albums list. And for good reason. I mean, this is such a staple of the 60s. 1967, when, you know, I mean, I, I'm obviously going to be talking about Pink Floyd next. So you've got Piper at the Gates of Dawn, their first album, Cream's Disraeli Gears, Jimi Hendrix's Are You Experienced? Just so many albums. And Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, it just, it's up there, man. It's an album that took so many chances. It's got this kind of concept with them introducing themselves as a different group, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, real rock and song with Paul's vocal, get Ringo singing with a little help from my friends. Um, John's got Lucy and the Sky with Diamonds. George has Within You, Without You. Oh my God, the Indian instrumentation on that is so good. It's one of my favorite tracks and one that I don't think gets enough love. Um, at obviously, a day in the life, I still get comments on my best of Beatles playlist that I didn't include. And sometimes I even think about that myself. I think being in Let It Be and having played it quite a few times might have diminished it a little bit, but it, it's an epic tune, man. The only thing about Sgt. Pepper is I've gotten a little tired of When I'm 64. Again, played it too many times, and I never got that into Lovely Rita. So I just don't think it quite hits me in the same way as Revolver does. It, it's still, they're, they're still very, very equally matched, but I think I'm going to have to give it to Revolver. But Pepper's definitely going to be high on the list. Um, I'm probably going to put it above A Hard Day's Night and Rubber Soul, but still under Revolver, so it, it's high, it's very high. As much as I would personally include Within You Without You as my personal track, I've probably got to give the essential track to the title song. Also, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, A Day in the Life, a lot to choose from here. So now we come to the black sheep of the UK albums, Magical Mystery Tour, because this was not a UK release. This was a US release. And the UK, they only released the songs from the film or, you know, BBC film, whatever, whatever it was called, um, which is Magical Mystery Tour, uh, The Fool on the Hill, Flying Blue Jay Way, Your Mother Should Know, and I Am the Walrus, of course. I Am the Walrus definitely puts it pretty high for me. Um, if I was only going off of that, it wouldn't be very high, even with I Am the Walrus. I don't like Magical Mystery Tour that much. Your Mother Should Know is very low for me. Flying, interesting instrumental, but not great. Um, I do like Fool on the Hill a lot. But what absolutely elevates this album for me is that they had the good sense to include some A-sides and B-sides like Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields is easily one of my favorite Beatles songs ever, if not my favorite. And if that's not enough, Penny Lane is on it. All you need is love. I even I got a soft spot for Hello Goodbye, I gotta say. So that really elevates this album much more than it has any right to be elevated. E even if Strawberry Fields Forever was the only song on here that I got into, it'd still be enough for it to be pretty high. And if that's not enough, I am the walrus I love. I still think it's not as great because of some of the Magical Mystery Tour tracks. It's not as good as A Hard Day's Night or Rubber Soul, but I still think I like it more than a lot of the um, early releases. So I am going to go ahead and put it above help. I think... Uh, because uh, I, I think help, uh, I, think, I think help and Magical Mystery Tour are kind of on par. Both have some really solid tracks. Both have a couple of clunkers. But I prefer the the heavy hitters of Magical Mystery Tour than I do help because Magical Mystery Tour has Strawberry Fields. It's also got Penny Lane. All you need is love. I am the Walrus. Well, now we are at the White Album. I, I've I have mixed feelings about the White Album because. If you've seen my top 10 worst Beatles songs, you know that a lot of songs appeared on here, including my number one pick, which is Revolution 9. And like I said then, it's not even really a track, but it does take up a precious 
eight minutes of time on this album. In fact, the whole fourth disc is kind of a wash for me. I'm kind of disappointed that the single version of Revolution isn't on here, although I think Revolution 1 is pretty good. Um, I don't like Honey Pie. Good Night's kind of a silly way to end the album. But man, there are some heavy, good tracks on this album. Dear Prudence, that's one of John's best, best ballads. Uh, George's, one of George's best songs, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Happiness is a warm gun. Damn, that takes you on a journey. Uh, Paul's Blackbird. I even really like Ringo's Don't Pass Me By. I think it's such a, a quirky, fun little tune. You were in a car crash and you lost your hand. <laughs> a great line. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, everybody's got something to hide except for me and my monkey. That's a real heavy track. Um, Helter Skelter, of course. Um, so, yeah, th there are some real, real heavy hitters on the White Album. A lot of them. It's just that there's also a bit of crap on the White Album. It's, it's kind of what makes it an interesting listen. So, I'm kind of torn on this one. Um, but... I would say, getting back to these other two albums I said, um, these were the three that I spent the most time agonizing over. I'm like, um, I would say they're not going to make it above Sgt. Pepper or Revolver, but after that, I'd say, honestly, all three of these are interchangeable. They're all great albums for different reasons, but I've got to arrange them, so... I think Rubber Soul as an album is more cohesive. I think the flow is great. There's not a lot of duds except for the end for me. Um, there's a lot more duds on the White Album. But as much as I love Rubber Soul, there's not as many songs that stand out to me as there are on the White Album. I mean, I love Nowhere Man. Nowhere Man is one of my favorites. But Dear Prudence, While My Guitar Gently Weeps... I think I'm going to go ahead and put the White Album above Rubber Soul. Um, and then as far as A Hard Day's Night, I mean, again, I think as an album, I think this is one of the most cohesive they have. And I think it's hard because we're comparing a late album to an early album. And a lot of their early albums are pretty low on my list. So you know what? I think A Hard Day's Night, I'm going to go ahead and put it above the White Album. Is that a sacrilegious thing to do? It may be. But honestly, like I said, you could interchange any one of these albums. They're all great listens. I am going to put them all below Sgt. Pepper and Revolver. And uh, we can move on. Oh, the essential track to the White Album. My essential track is While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Other standout tracks, Dear Prudence, Happiness is a Warm Gun, Blackbird. And now let's move on to Let It Be. And yes, I do realize Let It Be came out after Abbey Road, but this was recorded first. And it's interesting to now look at Let It Be now that Get Back has been released. I think a lot of us are starting to kind of um, rethink this album a little bit. And um, the funny thing with Let It Be is I never got that into this album. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with Phil Spector. I think Phil Spector absolutely ruined this album. What he did to The Lawn Winding Road, what he did to Across the Universe, and just the flow of the album with all of this orchestral crap that is overblown and unnecessary. And the flow of it just feels really underwhelming. I mean, also... For God's sakes, where is Don't Let Me Down? Why is Don't Let Me Down not on this album? I, I get it was released as a B-side, but Get Back is on here. Uh, to me, that that is one of the biggest blunders that anybody ever did, was not putting Don't Let Me Down on uh, Let It Be. Um, I, there are still great songs in here. I love I've Got a Feeling. I've Got a Feeling has got to be my essential track. And so many other great songs, Let It Be, Across the Universe, Get Back. But honestly, my preferred way of listening to Let It Be is Let It Be Naked. Well, first of all, the fact that Don't Let Me Down is on there, that already elevates it. But I really love listening to the naked version of Lawn and Winding Road. I, that's my favorite version of Let It Be. And I think it flows better. It just, it's just, you know, hearing Across the Universe without all that, all those 
the choir singers and everything on it just lets you really appreciate the beauty of the song. So, unfortunately, I'm judging this copy right here and it's gonna be kind of low for me. I'm gonna put it under Help. I think Help is a better album, it's more cohesive, it flows a little better. Um, I would rather listen to Let It Be than um, the earliest albums. And finally, we come to Abbey Road and uh, Okay, you already know that a lot of you already know Abbey Road is my favorite Beatles album. And there are times when I'll listen to Revolver or Hard Day's Night or Sgt. Pepper when I go, I don't know, maybe that's the best Beatles album. So my favorite Beatles album could change, uh, you know, depending on the day, how I feel. But in terms of songwriting, in terms of production, in terms of how the album flows, you can't get better than Abbey Road. It was one of my top 10 songs that shaped me. I believe it was number four. I still remember waking up every day as a kid on my way to school listening to Here Comes the Sun. Uh, the opening come together, that just gets you really in the mood. God, the whole medley from You Never Give Me Your Money all the way to the end is just one of the most fantastic pieces of music I've ever heard in my life. Uh, the, the trading guitar solos at the end leading into Paul's swan song with the Beatles, and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. You know, Her Majesty kind of undercuts that a little bit, but I kind of look at it more as just kind of like a bonus song. At least they didn't put it in the piece. And man, uh, Ringo's got a great number with Octopus's Garden. Uh, I want you, she's so heavy. That's a real heavy trick. Something. I mean, I, I could go on with this entire album. I could go on for a long time. As much as I want to call the medley the essential track, I'll go ahead and call Here Comes the Sun the essential track. But also, Come Together is a standout track. Something's a standout track. Oh, Darling, Octopus's Garden. The, the whole album, really. Um, so yeah, there you go. Abbey Road is my top Beatles album. So let's go ahead and review my list. We've got the Beatles swan song Abbey Road topping the list, followed very closely by Revolver in second place, and a solid third with Sgt. Pepper. Four, five, and six, I'm doing A Hard Day's Night, The White Album, and Rubber Soul, but honestly, these are all interchangeable. They're three great albums. I spent a really long time agonizing over their order, but I gotta rank them somehow, so that's how I decided to rank them. Magical Mystery Tour is right in the middle at number seven. Help giving a good showing at number eight. Then we've got this version of Let It Be at number nine. I really wish I could include Let It Be Naked, but I can't. Their debut, Please Please Me, is at number 10. Their sophomore, With the Beatles, at number 11. Beatles for Sale coming on at second to last. And finally, Yellow Submarine at the bottom, which to me doesn't even really count as a Beatles album, but again, it's not a bad listen if you want to check it out. Anyway, everyone, I want to thank you so much for your support, especially big thank you to my uh, patrons on my Patreon page. Um, if you guys can join my Patreon page, it would really help me out a lot. And if not, feel free to subscribe and just keep watching me here. And, you know, I'm still working on getting History of Rock 80s up and you know, just trying to stay sane, you know, uh, keep my mind from wandering with all this craziness that's going on in the world. Everybody uh, take care of yourselves. And uh, if you excuse me, um, I've got another bunch of albums to take care of. So I'll see you all soon.